we have a God in heaven that loves each and every one of us very much. He doesn't want any one of us to perish. And he certainly doesn't want any one of us to end up in hell. We have some YouTubers I see, some very popular with many subscribers, that are debunking the validity of these blood moons that we have just had the first one. We're getting ready to have another one in three, a little over, you know, a little under three months, I guess. And two more in 2015. And they fail, in my opinion, to realize the significance of God's own timeline. Because he makes time. He is time. The calendar is his. Man has changed the calendar to what we go by now. But God's calendar never changes. And that's why when you see these blood moons falling upon these sacred holidays here, these feasts, it has very, very big ramifications for the world. Either for Israel, either for some things that have to do with all humanity, or both. But he does not place these for no reason upon his sacred time. So I am against the YouTubers that do not realize how significant that they are. Because you must pay attention, you must understand, and you must realize. As I said, he does not do this just because, and it is not just a naturally occurring event, you will be dead, your children will be dead, and their children will be dead by the times that these come up again on these sacred holidays. So when NASA or some other YouTuber says, well, we're going to have tetrads, you know, the tetrads are nothing. They are leaving out that the tetrads and the blood moons are falling upon the Jewish holidays. They are leaving that out to support their anti-view. So, what have we seen since April the 15th? Well, we have seen Carrie wanting to get a peace deal done between Israel and the Palestinians, and he wanted it done by the end of April. Obama chimed in, he wanted it done by the end of April, at least guaranteeing a framework of which you saw that completely fall apart, done, gone, down the crapper. So I say to you, God does not want that land shared. He works in mysterious ways. You have to believe in him. You have to have faith in him. It's his land. It's gifted by covenant to someone. Okay, shake the tree on that one, see what falls out. But it is what it is. It was what it was, and it shall be forever what it shall be. So what else have you seen since April 15th? This is an interesting article, if it holds any truth. A current article telling about ISIS giving an ultimatum to Christians in Mosul, Iraq, that they will convert to Islam or they will pay money. It does not say how much. I don't suppose it would be real cheap. Or they will leave Iraq. And if they do not convert, pay money, Pack up and leave. 
They will be killed. Nothing for them but the sword. You get it? You've got hardcore Islam, according to this article, within ISIS. You've got ISIS born and armed and trained, supposedly by the United States in, in a base in Jordan. These are some still photos with some different little things about what the photos say. These are talking about the Christians that are leaving. And it's supposed to be the first time in the history of Iraq that Mosul now has no Christians in it. <clears throat> so, this is one thing you have seen since the first blood moon. You've seen this rise of this ISIS. And it's a very interesting thing. Because if the number of ISIS is accurate, I can only find they got between 800 and 1,000 men, unless they've recruited more since they began making their trek and supposedly taking things over. Now, how do you how do you defeat forces that are waiting on you that number in the thousands? You know, you telling me everybody got chicken and scared and just quit? I mean, if if you've got like ten thousand troops and they've got like a thousand guys, you got to number them ten to one. So your guess, you know would be the same as mine, I would guess, is that this is being allowed. It was allowed for hardcore Muslim extremists, whatever you want to call it, to take over Libya when we killed Gaddafi. This is Iraq. It is being allowed since we killed Saddam Hussein. They got a pretty hardcore brand of it in Yemen. You're going to see it in, you'll hear Afghanistan mentioned somewhere. So this would be, I have a little video also with it where you can play it and watch that. Listen to what this man is saying. We already saw that last week where they went into some of the oldest, uh, uh, where some of the oldest tombs were at and just beat them down. And I did, this is just a still picture. I did watch the actual video of them swinging the sledgehammers and knocking them down. So this is very significant. You've also seen, within the last few days, an incident take place in which an airliner was downed, another Malaysian airliner. And uh, some of the prior reasons I discussed, Russia had put a thorn in the side of the United States and uh, the globalists, the elitists, the Satanists, the New World Order that wanted to, to go in and get into Syria. They want to do, they want to do a Gaddafi and a Saddam to Assad. They want that. They want it to become harder core Islam. This is another reason why that uh, the shooting down of that airliner could possibly be manufactured. Remember, the foreman their own little trade groups, see. The dollar is dying before your very eyes. You have to understand, when we see things cost more, it's not 
so much as the product itself costs more to manufacture. You had to raise the wages of the workers. It's costing you more for the insurance. It's not so much as the price itself has increased as, as actually it is the value of the paper has decreased. So when your paper is more worthless, it takes more paper to be able to, to buy something, to pay for things. We have to realize the paper is being devalued as I make this video. It'll continue, and you'll see rises in prices, and it has nothing, you know, not as much to do with an increase in costs or providing uh, goods and services as it does as the paper is becoming worthless. So this, these are the bricks. Brazil, Russia, India, and China. <clears throat> and they are making a new bank. And it's going to, uh, it's going to rival the IMF. See, you have the leaders, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa. They're, they've gonna, they're going to create a new development bank with $100 billion in capital. They just had their summit, so everything's a done deal. Now, we are, we're talking about these people deciding that they don't want to do business you know, like it has been done in the past. You know, the dollar, they're tired of the dollar, they're tired of the IMF, they're tired of the games, apparently, and they're taking some action. So the globalist bankers cannot like this. The Rothschilds cannot like this. The United States cannot like it. Of course, um, China is mentioned in, mentioned in there, but the United States uh, gets gets a lot of money from China, so they're not really gonna throw any flack China's way. But as I said, Russia's been a thorn in the United States' ass in a couple of instances here, where they wanted to do something really bad, and Russia put a, a curveball in there and prevented it. So. It is possible that they could be getting back at Russia by instigating a situation with the downed airliner in which world condemnation comes upon them. So these is, this is just another incidence of changes you have seen, incidences that have happened since the first blood moon. Think about how these things affect the world. Now, I'm not even showing you anything about the fighting over in Israel. But that fighting has began after the first blood moon. And somebody out there is going to think and say, Boy, yeah, but this stuff happens all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, think what you may. But you're not going to get around the fact, the fact, that this blood moon did occur on April the 15th of this year on Passover, and that these things have happened after this initial moon. And if you are going to have another one on October the 8th, oh yeah. So God is telling the world, Things are going to change rapidly, and they're going to get worse. And to prepare, make yourself ready. Make your friends ready. Make everybody you know ready for the change that's coming on in the world. Christ is returning soon. And you need to be prepared because you don't want to be left behind.